Solving two-step equations with negative numbers, number 6.4b. And just as with one-step equations, we can use inverse operations to solve two-step equations, even negative ones. Temperatures, ocean depths, sea levels have negative numbers, and we solve the equations the same as we did with the positive ones. To convert a temperature from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, we first subtract 32, then multiply the result by 5 ninths. So that's going from Fahrenheit to Celsius. An outdoor thermometer showed a temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. So this is the formula to find Celsius, but it's already giving us Celsius. So what was the original Fahrenheit degree? We need to find X. We could have even put an F there, couldn't we? Because this is the formula to find Celsius, that's why the negative 10 degrees is there, because that's the Celsius. We can use inverse operations, and because there's a fraction here, we can multiply each side of this equation by the reciprocal of 5 ninths as 9 fifths. We multiply this side by the 9 fifths and this side by the 9 fifths. 9 times 5 is 45, and 5 times 9 is, 9 is 45, so we have 45 over 45. Same numerator and denominator makes a 1, doesn't it? So now that's eliminated because it's just a 1, and 1 times a number is that number, so we don't need that 1. On this side, we get a negative 90 over a 5, and when we simplify that, we get a negative 18. Now, we can add this 32 to each side of the equation to isolate that x. It creates a zero pair here. We end up with just x equals 14 degrees Fahrenheit. See? And there is actually a formula to find Fahrenheit that's a little bit different than this, but they're using the Celsius formula to find it, okay? Just to show you how to use inverse operations. So remember that the number that's in front of the variable is the coefficient, the reciprocal is an upside down version of the fraction, and a fraction coefficient is the same thing as a coefficient, it's just a fraction, okay? An airplane flies at an altitude of 38,000 feet. As it prepares to land, it descends at the rate of 600 feet per minute. At this rate, how many minutes will it take for the plane to descend to 18,000? 800 feet. So we're going to let m equal minutes. That's what we're trying to find, how many minutes. And it's descending, so that means we're going to subtract. 600 feet per minute is a multiplication equation. Depending on the minutes, it's 600 for each one, so if it was 2 minutes, it would be 1,200, right? So it would be 600 times 2. So that's a multiplication equation. So now, the equation we have is 38,000 minus 600 m equals 18,800. We can isolate this m and create a zero pair by adding a negative 38,000 to both sides of the equation. It creates a zero pair here, and all we're left with is negative 600 m on this side and negative 19,200 on the other side. See? We can isolate this m further by dividing each side by this coefficient negative 600. We divide both sides by negative 600. Same numerator and denominator, so we get a 1. That's a 1m. And when we divide negative 19,200 by a negative 600, we get a positive 32. Remember, negative and negative makes a positive. So it's going to take 32 minutes to descend to 18,800 feet. Bob earned an 88 on a test that had a possible 120 points. He lost four points for each incorrect answer. How many incorrect answers did he have? So we think there's four points for each answer. That means we're going to do 4x. If he had two wrong, there would be four times two, wouldn't it? So the x, that's going to be multiplication. 120 was the total possible points. We need to subtract the amount he got wrong from the 120 to equal the 88 that he scored. So our equation is 120, that's the possible he could have gotten, minus 4 points for each one, so it's minus 4x, and it's going to equal the 88 that he did get. We're going to isolate this x by creating a zero pair. We add a negative 120 to both sides of the equation. This is eliminated, 
and we're left with negative 4x equals a negative 32. Now what we have to do is divide each side by the coefficient to isolate the x. Negative 4 is the coefficient. We divide both sides by negative 4. Same numerator and denominator. So we have 1x equals a positive 8. So we got 8 wrong on the test. All right. Now here's some equations just to keep you going. We have 8x minus 7 equals 25. With this minus 7, we can add 7 to each side. And that creates a 0 pair here. So now we have 8x equals 32. We divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient 8. We get 1x equals 4. Here's a negative 1. We have negative 3 plus x divided by 7. Because remember, fractions are little division problems. And it equals negative 5. We need to isolate this numerator x to, and create a 0 pair. So we're going to add a positive 3 to both sides of the equation and eliminate this negative 3. Now all we're left with is x divided by 7 equals a negative 2. So we multiply both sides of the equal sign by this denominator 7. That's going to give us, and we can write it as a 7 over 1, can't we? That's going to give us 7x over 7. Same numerator and denominator of a 7 over a 7, so we get 1x equals a negative 14. See? We just multiplied both sides by that denominator. So take a look at this one. We have 16 plus 7 divided by x equals 24. Now the x is the denominator. We create 0 pairs to get rid of this 16 by adding a negative 16 to each side of the equation. That's going to give us the 7x equals 8. See? 24 minus 16 is 8. And x is the denominator, isn't it? So just like in this one, let me step back a little bit. Just like in this one where we multiplied both sides by the denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. x. That's going to give us a 7x over an x equals 8x. Because you can write x over 1, couldn't you? So it would be x times 7 as the numerator and 1x as the denominator. So you really have 7x over x, okay, over 1x, but we don't write the 1. So now this x over x has the same numerator and denominator, so it's just a 1. And it equals 8x. Now we can divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient 8. Now the coefficient's on this side. And we get a 7 eighths. We don't need to do anything more to this. We get a 7 eighths equals the x. See? Same numerator and denominator makes a 1x. So the answer is 7 eighths equals x. Okay? And there's going to be links in the description to the grade 7 math video for 6.3 that talked about what are two-step equations and the previous video, 6.4a. All right? So... I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button if it was. And I'll see you next time. Keep trying. I'm proud of you. Bye.